Today we talk about why is it after three or four IUIs do we recommend you moving on to something like IVF? And the question is, should you even try IUI or should you just move on to IVF to begin with? I'm Dr. Mark Amos, and this is Taco About Fertility Tuesday. As a patient, you obviously trust your doctor. And so many patients trust their doctors. And when they say, if you've done three IUIs and it hasn't worked, you should move on to IVF. But the question is, is that really what the data shows? And if it does, why do we move on to the IVF? I mean, it sounds great, right? We use it in baseball, three strikes and you're out. So why not do that with fertility as well? And so in this episode, we're going to talk about why the three or four cycles? What's the reasoning behind it? Where did it come from? And what does it mean? And then should you even try IUIs? Are you one of those people who should just skip it all together? As many of you know, IUIs are not very successful. It doesn't mean they can't be successful. They're just not very successful. A matter of fact, most IUIs, if you're using just Clomid or Femara, it's only going to be around a 12 to 15% chance of it working per cycle. Now, if you multiply that by three tries, you end up with a pregnancy rate of around 38.6%. I know what you're thinking, that's not much. And you're right, it's not a lot. That's not even 50% of the people are going to get pregnant. But it's important to understand that your chances, if you're doing IUIs, are probably low to begin with. If you've been trying for over a year to get pregnant, there's a good chance that your chances of getting pregnant per month are probably less than 5% right now. And so if you can get your pregnancy rate to 12 to 15%, obviously that's a very big jump. But most of us like to be in a situation where at least there's a 50% chance of success. And so you can increase your chances by being more aggressive. So there are medications you can take like injectables, and those will boost the amount of eggs you make, and that can get you close to around 18 to 22% chance per cycle. And using 20% chance after three tries, now you're looking at around a 49% chance of having a successful live birth. So it's solved. Everyone should do more aggressive cycles. But in reality, it's actually not very safe to do those, and that unless your doctor feels comfortable with that option, most of the time, they're going to do something that's a little less aggressive, like Clomid and Femara. As you would expect, the younger you are, the better chances Clomid and Femara are going to work. Femara is also called letrozole, for those who aren't familiar with the word Femara. And those who are older have a lower chance of it working with Clomid or Femara. So the question then goes, why even do IUIs? Well, the reason we do IUIs is because they're very affordable. IVF at some places can be very expensive. I've heard some people tell me in the high 20s, even 30,000s for IVF at some places. And then there's places like us that are unique, and a little bit more affordable. But still, even when affordable, it doesn't make it cheap. And so the reason we do IUIs is because they work. I have many patients who get pregnant by IUI. But I also have many patients who say to me, well, I had a friend who did IUIs and it didn't work. Well, that's true. As we just discussed, statistically speaking, over 60% of people are not going to get pregnant after three IUIs if they're just doing Clomid or Femara. So, of course, your friends didn't get pregnant. Statistically speaking, it's going to seem like it's really bad. Even in the group that's being more aggressive, still about half the people will not get pregnant with IUIs. And so it's really important when doing IUIs that you are the right candidate for an IUI. So there's obvious reasons there's not a good candidate. Like if your tubes are blocked, IUIs won't work. If the sperm is severely low, IUIs won't work. But there's also other causes, such as things that are not easily seen. I've talked about this in prior podcasts where the tubes might be open, but it doesn't mean they're functional. Well, the sperm may look good on paper, but it doesn't mean the sperm's getting to the egg or that's even penetrating the egg. 
Then you got things like endometriosis that can be causing problems and just unexplained infertility in general. That's when I look at time. And what I mean by that is, just like time heals all wounds, time usually fixes a lot of fertility problems. I meet people all the time who had a baby and it took them two years, three years, but they eventually got pregnant. And so looking at time, if someone's had a really long time of not getting pregnant, it means the problem's a bigger problem. Someone who hasn't got pregnant over 10 years has probably a bigger issue going on than someone who just took a year and a half to get pregnant. Both of them have infertility. By definition, they both took over a year. But clearly there's a difference between 10 years and only one and a half years. Now, sometimes it's just completely obvious who should do IUIs. Guy comes in, his sperm count's a little bit low, and you go, IUIs are going to be perfect. Your motility's low or your concentration is low. It's a perfect treatment for you. And honestly, most people will probably get pregnant with IUIs in that situation. But that's not the main reason people do IUIs. It could be for unexplained infertility. And in unexplained infertility, it's that question of what's really wrong. Is it a hostile environment in the vaginal flora? Is it something to do with the fallopian tubes that we don't realize the little fingers aren't working on them? Or is it that penetration issue? And so the question is, when do you stop doing the IUIs? And so the category of patients that we're talking about are people who should be doing IUIs, but it's also the category of people who we don't know if the IUIs are ever going to work. If we had a crystal ball, on who the IUIs are going to work for, then we're going to keep doing them, right? I mean, why stop? We know eventually it's going to work, but we don't have that crystal ball. Now, we have a little bit of a crystal ball because we know if it's a category that should work, such as the situation where, let's say, you're using donor sperm and you have no infertility, like in the last same-sex couples. Well, then it's not unreasonable to do more than three or four IUIs. Same thing if a guy has a low sperm count. It's not unreasonable to do more than three to four IUIs. But for everybody else, if it's not a category where we're expecting the IUI to definitely work, and it's unexplained, or there's endometriosis, then that's where we start using that category of three to four IUIs and then move on. And so where does that come from? Well, what people have looked at is, statistically speaking, If it's going to work, it's going to work in the first three to four tries. There was actually a study done. It was in Massachusetts where they went and they looked at all of the people who got pregnant with IUI. So they didn't look at the people who didn't. They said, who got pregnant? And then they went back and they looked at it and said, okay, when did they get pregnant? Was it on IUI number six, number eight, number 10? And to their surprise, in a way, they were like, wow, that's impressive. About 90% of people who got pregnant were pregnant in the first three to four IUIs. And so what we realized is there was diminishing returns after that third or fourth IUI. So the thing that made IUIs kind of desirable, being the lower cost and simpler, basically lost its value after that third or fourth IUI. At that point, it's like, yeah, it's lower cost, but now if it hasn't worked, it's probably not going to work. And so if you're one of those people who are in the unexplained category, then that tells us that it's probably good to move on at that point to something like IVF because it probably is one of those other things. The same thing is if you're one of those patients who, let's say, was using donor sperm, it's not unreasonable after a third or fourth one to go, well, I'm going to try it again because the couples that they looked at were people who had infertility. And it's important to understand that it doesn't also mean just three or four and then you have to be done. What it means is, are you getting pregnant? If on IUI number two, you get a chemical pregnancy or maybe you have a pregnancy and you have a miscarriage, then you can try IUIs again because it did work. It may not lead to a live birth, but it at least got you pregnant and it's a valid option. But if you do two IUIs and you get a chemical pregnancy and then you do two IUIs and get a chemical pregnancy, at some point you go, okay, yes, I'm getting pregnant, But the goal is to have a baby and maybe we should move on to something like IVF, which then allows you to have more information because you can see what's going on and see if there's maybe another issue going on. But it's important to also understand the study didn't say that you have to go to IVF. If your clinic is willing to be more aggressive, sometimes it just means being more aggressive. 
So if you were doing three cycles of Clomid, now do three cycles with injectables. Now, the reason, again, most people don't like doing that is because of the high risk of multiples. So there are very few clinics, I'd say, in the country now that really do more aggressive IUIs. Most tend to just do Clomid or Femara and then move on to IVF. And that's reasonable. Again, we may not all practice that way, but that's not an unreasonable way to practice because it does, in the end, lower the risk of multiples. So now that we clarify the different reasons people do IUIs and why some people might be better candidates than others, the question is then, for most people doing IUIs, if we don't have an absolute reason like unexplained infertility or just a mild sperm problem, not major, then doing three or four IUIs makes sense. It doesn't work moving on to some other treatment or to IVF or some other testing like a laparoscopy looking for endo. Now, if you have an absolute reason that can be benefit from the IUI, such as a sperm issue or and I'm talking not just a minor, but a little bit more that, you know, IUI can help or even a situation where you're using donor sperm, it's not unreasonable to do more than three to four IUIs. Up to six, it's not unreasonable. But the other thing that you have to look at is it's not just doing three IUIs and then moving on to IVF. Each IUI you do, you should evaluate. And you should be asking yourself, how did it go? Was the sperm good at the end? Did I make a lot of eggs? The IUI helps determine if you should do another IUI. So if you do, let's say, a Femar IUI and he gets done, gives a sperm, and they wash it. The sperm looked good in the beginning, but by the time they got done washing it, it was down to a million sperm. That's not a good IUI because you want that sperm to be somewhere between at least five and 10 million. And so, you know, it's not unreasonable to do a second one, but that happens again. Stop doing the IUIs. You're not a good candidate anymore. It doesn't matter what the sperm looked like beforehand. The point is, while you're doing the IUIs, you're seeing that it's not going well. The same thing with making follicles. If you know you're someone who's a little bit more mature and you need more eggs and the medicines you're taking are only getting you one or two eggs and you really need more like three or four, it may not be a good option for you. It might make more sense to be more aggressive. But there's another category of patients. And those are the patients with unexplained infertility. And sometimes you don't know you have unexplained infertility until you actually go and get worked up. But when you do, the question is, how long has it been that you've been trying for. And what I tend to believe is after two or three years of unexplained infertility, I really question whether IUIs are going to work for people. Now, again, if you find out you have a sperm issue, IUIs are great. But if everything comes back and it's completely normal and you've been trying for five years, the chance of the IUI working is very low. And in that situation, I actually think it's worth just moving forward with IVF. I don't know where that cutoff is. I tend to use three years as kind of my cutoff where I start to recommend the patients that, listen, it's been three years. It's probably not going to work, but if you want to try it, we can try it. And by five years for sure, I'm, I'm just recommending going straight to IVF. There's even situations where someone's older and you say, listen, it's probably makes sense to just jump straight to IVF because we can be more aggressive, get more eggs to help you. But the important part is Whatever you do, if you have unexplained infertility, or even if it's just a minor sperm problem like morphology, or maybe the concentration is a tiny bit low, or the motility is a tiny bit low, it's 39% instead of 40, then three IUIs, if it hasn't worked, you should move on. Because statistically speaking, 90% of the people who get pregnant are pregnant in the first three cycles in that situation. And then you should probably move on the IVF because you're just being wasting time and money. But if you're one of those patients where it's expected to work because you don't have infertility like donor sperm or a situation where we know the sperm is low and it's worked in the past or something like that with IUIs, then it's not more unreasonable to keep doing the IUIs for up to about six cycles. As you can see, the point is it's different for every single person. And that's the thing. We're all unique. And so one treatment, one methodology doesn't really pertain to everyone. And you have to make adjustments. The point of this episode was more just to help people understand, you know, should they do IOIs? And if they do, how many should they do? And when should they move on? 
I used IVF as a next step, but please keep in mind, it could be more testing, it could be surgery, it could even be IVC. There are other options in just moving the IVF. I just use that as the next option because that's the most common next option when you fail IUIs. Hopefully this episode was helpful to you, or maybe you know someone who's going through this or is about ready to do IUIs, and you can let them know about this episode and can help them. As always, I greatly appreciate everyone who listens to this podcast, and I appreciate you telling other people about us. And if you love us, give us a five-star review on your favorite medium, and again, tell your friends about us. But most important, as I always say, I really enjoy doing this and look forward to you again talking to you about fertility on my favorite day, talk about Fertility Tuesday. Tuesday.